right, welcome to the Outsiders Podcast. Noah Groninger here with a very special guest host, EJ Tangonin. Thank you, Noah. I'm glad to be here on the Outsiders Podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem at all. It's great to have you. Clint Schweitzer is away with family issues. He couldn't make it for this podcast. Yeah, exactly. And we have a very special guest on. It's his loss, William Russ, That's Alan right. Matthews from Boy Meets World, oh, man. Dennis Vineyard from American History X. Uh, We've got it. Aspen Extreme. He's been in so much stuff. We are so excited to have him. How are you feeling about this, EJ? This is insane. This is a dream come true. I mean, I grew up with this guy. He's like my second dad, basically. I learned so many lessons from him. Hell, I still watch the, you know, I have the DVDs. I still watch it when it comes on Disney. I mean, this is, this guy is like Tom Cruise to me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if we had Tom Cruise on, I wouldn't be shaking like I am right now. Oh, no. I'm completely nervous. I'm scared of screwing up. I don't know if he's going to like me. We have got to make this thing gold. It is going to be great. We are so excited to have William Russ on. Please welcome William William Russ. Russ. Good morning, Corey. Hi, Eric. Hello, Brooks Robinson, deep pocket fielder's choice model. How are you feeling today? All warm and broken in? Uh, You know, Dad, most people put their gloves under the mattress to break them in. Well, most people don't have a glove that they broke in 25 years ago, Eric. See, now, with this baby, you baste it with glavolium, and you bake it in a slow oven till the web's ready to snap shut on any line drive that comes near third base tomorrow. The father-son softball game. Has it been a year already? Can you believe it? Why you're making a federal case out of this? Maybe if you were entrusted with the education of 32 sixth graders every day, you would understand what I'm talking about. And maybe if you had a son and you were trying to find time to spend with him in between your job and fixing the car and insulating the attic, you'd understand what I'm talking about. But you don't have a son, George, so how could you understand? Um, just want you to know I'm going to have him in bed every night when he's supposed to be. Well, I want you to know that if I did have a son and the opportunity presented itself to uh, wake him up to watch a baseball game or to listen to the president on the radio or for absolutely no reason at all. Well, good night, Alan. Good night, George. Look, You're not dealing with gullible little kids here now, buddy. Now, you brought Sean down. Thanks. Now, why don't you just take a hike back to Conland? Now, do you see how judgmental these people are? No, no, listen. You see. A judgment I made a long time ago is that Sean Hunter is the best friend that my kid ever had. And I will kill to protect Sean Hunter from people like you. Too bad I can't go to the water war to use it. You can if you run. Isn't it my responsibility to finish painting the fence? I think your first responsibility is to stay 11 years old as long as you can. I only worked half a shift today. I don't know how he does it. Who? Dad. 12-hour days. Never sits. Eats his lunch standing up. Never takes a break. It's like he's not human. It's like he's something... It's like he's Superman. Huh? Superman's my dad. All right, here on the Outsiders Podcast, it's our pleasure to welcome one of our favorite actors of all time, William Russ. You guys know him best from Aspen Extreme, American History X, and who can forget Boy Meets World. Welcome to the show, William, and how you doing these days? Hey, William, this is EJ. I'm the guest co-host uh, this week, and uh, just got to say I'm a huge fan of the show. I'm a huge fan of you. Um, first and foremost, we got to talk about this big news. Girl Meets World gets picked up by Disney. Can we look forward to Grandpa Alan making an appearance, or have they approached you about it? <laughs> I don't know. I'd certainly love to. You know, I'm, I'm real happy for those guys. It's a great bunch of people, and uh, Michael Jacobs, who created the show, it was really an extraordinary talent. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to him coming in there as a granddad. But also, I, you know, if you remember, I actually have a kid that's only two years older than than the, than girl. That's right. <laughs> so they haven't approached you about it yet. Are they sort of saving it? Do you think? I I don't know. We'll see. You know, they do a pilot and then they start making up shows. So. Okay. Awesome. Well. We'll see. 
the the show Boy Meets World has been just such a big part of a lot of people's childhoods. How do people respond to you in public, like when they recognize you? Uh, well, it's, it's a pretty special gift that I've gotten, and I go, you know, all over the country because I, you know, I travel and I'll mm-hmm. see a lot of places, a little gas station in the middle of nowhere, and somebody go, oh, Alan Matthews, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's really kind of very special, you know, that I was uh-huh. able to come into these people's lives as, as this character, uh-huh. and, uh, and I've had people say, you know, that uh, they needed a dad at a certain time in their life. Oh. And Arwen happened to be that dad for them. And that's, that's really quite touching to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people, so I can uh, definitely feel like what they're feeling. So, uh, Can you give yeah, us any... So that's, that's a great gift that actors have, you know. Actors, right. whether they're playing good guys or bad guys, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's the experience that people take away from their... Um, channeling, so to speak, maybe a certain kind of energy, whether it's a dad or a mom or a sister or a brother or whatever the character might be. That's a special gift that actors have. Oh, yeah, definitely. Try to hold pretty sacred. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to your time on the show, can you give us any insight behind the change from Lily Nixay to L- Lindsay Ridgway as Morgan? <laughs> um, no, not really. Um, they're just, uh, you know, it really had nothing to do with, um, you know, anything that I'm was involved with, so that was a producer uh, decision. Um, I have no idea really what that would have been about. Uh, another change in the cast, uh, if you're privy to it, uh, I didn't <laughs> understand what Anthony Tyler Quinn is Jonathan Turner. I mean, right. he was a great addition to the show, so uh, why was he written out after the motorcycle accident? Gosh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Just let us know if we no. get too weird on you here, too. <laughs> And it's always kind of sad when people leave. I mean, there's yeah. various reasons, and you know, it's really a, it, it's you'd have to ask them. Mm-hmm. I really don't have the insight to that sort of thing. Uh, being the son of a naval officer, uh, did you have the writers write in that Alan was in the Navy, and what meaning did that have for you? Um, well, I think Michael knew that. You know, he knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know, you know, we obviously talked, and uh, right. You know, actually, when they created the part, they they. They came to me, and I, I wasn't really interested at the moment of doing a, a show. Mm. And then they did the pilot and came back to me. Uh, they came with someone else. Oh. And, um, hold on, sorry, guys. Uh, no problem? Are you there? Yeah. 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 I don't know. No, it's okay. Um, you know, modern times, beep, beep. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, take the good with the bad. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's my dog beeping me for a walk. Oh, <laughs> Well, uh, being such an iconic family sitcom dad, uh, you know, you mentioned to us earlier, you know, you're you're very much a family man yourself. Uh, did did a lot of Alan Matthews carry over into your like your real life parenting, or or did you go another direction with it? Uh, no, I tried to bring you know uh, qualities that he had, and you know, I'm sure uh, you know he wasn't a perfect person. That's why I think the show worked. And right. Everybody had their their own little. Idiosyncrasies, I think, and but um, I tried to bring his patience and fun and <laughs> and a lot of that into my own life uh, with my kids. Um, and it was pretty special. My daughter grew up kind of around uh, Corey and Topanga and all those guys. She would come to the set and hang out with those kids. And oh. They were great to her. That's so great. And uh, so it was, yeah, it was fun. It was very fun. So, do your kids continue to watch the show? How do they feel about it? Oh, really? <laughs> he was born. Oh, he was no. Born actually, after we finished it. I mean, he's seen it mm-hmm. on reruns, but he's only 14, so. Oh, okay. But my daughter, Georgia, of course, watched them all. <laughs> uh, she's 22 now. And uh-huh. uh, she gets a kick out of it. She was actually on one, I think, as an extra. Really? <laughs> yeah, the little kid, and I think it was the Christmas episode. Oh, wow. So she yeah, didn't get we, bit we by the acting? Funny story, she was riding in the back of the car. She was about five, and we said, 
we got a little special surprise for you. You gonna do something on the show? And she said, Oh yeah, really? Am I going to direct? <laughs> <laughs> Let's work our way up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been my question. But yeah, it was pretty special. Pretty special oh, playing out with Matthews and, and with Betsy Randall as, uh, as my wife. It was all, all pretty sweet. Well, uh, later on we saw your name attached to uh, the episodes as director. What was it like making the transition to directing the episodes as opposed to just being in them? Oh, it was really, really fun. And, uh, of course, I had great support from the cast and mm-hmm. the crew. Directing a show like that, especially when you're taping it, it's a little like being in a three ring circus. It's all <laughs> live, and it's very exciting and takes a lot of concentration and energy. And um, it was really, really a special, special time. Really fun. Kind of getting close to the end of the Boy Moves World series, you filmed American History X in 1998. How difficult of a transition was that for you from uh, all around good guy Alan Matthews to? Kind of a complex character in Dennis Vineyard, uh, who you weren't quite sure if he was racist or just angry about affirmative action. Yeah, well, it was interesting. Those guys can't, you know, I, they had been to everybody in the world, and they couldn't quite cast that part. And hmm. and they kind of came and had a meeting with me, and it had been written a certain way. It was almost like an Archie Bunker character with huh. a lot of um, racist expletives and things like that. Mm-hmm. And they said, what would you do with this? You know, there's a whole speech there. And right. I said, uh, well, all you have to do is really use just one word. You'll know everything you know. And, and the, like I said, the great thing about being an actor is you can portray these characters. And once you hear him use the, the, the N-word and give his point of view, you know everything you knew. Mm-hmm. You needed to know about why the kid grew up the way he did. Yeah. And, uh, and the fear that he grew up under, because that's all it is. You know, we think we think it's hatred that we have when it comes to right. racism and things like that, but it's really fear. Mm-hmm. It's really fear that we're talking about. And, and uh, I was really, you know, it was an intense, it was a wonderful script, and, a, and it turned out to be quite an amazing movie. Right. So I was really proud of that. And, and to give this little final button on, the car- on, the, on Ed Norton's character, mm-hmm. this little puzzle that the movie tries to figure out, I was happy to be a part of that because I really, I really loved the movie, actually. Well, we did a little research digging up. Uh, you're into high wind surfing and are an avid downhill skier. Uh, is that what attracted you to the part of Dave Ritchie in the film Aspen Extreme? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of those dream jobs, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those dream jobs. It was um, a vacation, wasn't uh, it? <laughs> the guy uh, who created 21 Jump Street, um, I was a fan of mine, fortunately, from Wise Guy, and said, look, you know, I really want you in this movie, I don't really have a part, but would you play this ski patrol guy? I said, <laughs> I said hey, man, three weeks in Aspen, I'll be there. <laughs> you guys are paying me for this? Yeah. You know, yeah, it was a great cast, and I just had a great time. You know, sometimes you get those jobs. You know, a lot of times you're just sitting around in a desert or in a stage, and it's really boring and hot, and it's always a gift to be an actor, but boy, sometimes you really get a, a really sweet one, and that was one of them. Oh, what was your experience working with Peter Berg on the movie? He's become a really successful director. Oh, Peter's very talented. He was a very sweet, sweet guy, and uh, uh, it was just a pleasure to be around him. Him and, and um, oh gosh, I forget the other characters. He was also a producer writer. Paul Gross? Paul Gross. Yeah, yeah. yeah Paul Gross is very talented. So, so both of them, you know, they were they're really, really great. So, uh, if we can dial it back even more, how did you get into acting? Like, what hooked you onto it, and what was your training for it like? Um, well, actually, as I tell a lot of people, it was really the first thing that I found out, and I didn't really find acting until I was really in college. I went to the University of Michigan, and Mm -hmm. somehow I just fell into a speech class, and it was really acting, and... I just did it, and somebody said, oh, I need an actor for my directing class, and I said, I don't even know what, what that is, but I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> and actually, it just was one of the first things in my life, I went, oh, I get this. I get it, I understood it, I felt comfortable, it's like you finally find the right shoe that fits, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you try this one and this one, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, I, you know, what 
what should I do? My life, where does it? And then, you know, I just kind of stepped into this place of acting and went, oh, this is what I do. You just and knew I it. I never went back. Mm -hmm. You know, then I just kind of, I did theater and I was at the University of Michigan and I did a lot of theater. I ran lunchtime theater. We did plays in Europe. <laughs> oh, wow. In 68 to 72, we did plays on the street. <laughs> oh, wow. And, I, and then I, by accident, like life is a long time, just showing up. Mm -hmm. By accident, uh, the people, including, I don't know if you know Christine Waddy, but Christine and I were in school, and they said, we're going to go to Chicago, interview for this acting school in New York. You want to drive the car? And I said, sure. And wow. so we drove to Chicago and interviewed for the neighborhood playhouse. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, wow. One of the great acting icons. Mm -hmm. And somehow we got accepted, and I decided to go. I literally went to New York with about 40 bucks. Wow. And showed up and to this school. And just went and for it. And was my teacher. You know, I, I mm -hmm. didn't really know Stanford Miser or anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. He turned out to be my, my guru, my teacher. Wow, you learned it straight and, from the And world. I went there for two years, and uh -huh. that's a two-year program, graduated, and then I just got on the street. Auditioned. That's <laughs> wow. excellent. Staff, worked in restaurants, bartended, oh, yeah. cooked, waitered. So pretty much the staff. actor's life. <laughs> so who were uh, some of your acting idols that you sort of either drew upon or just like aspired to be like? You know, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't really know if I really had any acting icons growing up. I mm -hmm. mean, I had people I look back on and I say, wow, you know, I love those movies, I love that actor. But, you know, as I grew up, it was really rock and roll stars that everybody wanted really? to be. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting because when I started to do Shakespeare, and I did a number of Shakespeare plays in New York and Atlanta and, and uh, different places, and, and it was really musical phrasing that I really loved. So I loved... I don't know if I had any icons, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of icons I, you know, have known, and, and certainly there are actors I love. You know, right. you know modern actors, they, they someone like Al Pacino. Oh, you know, right. De Niro, yeah. those guys. Wow. Obviously. But even old guys, you know, I watch Spencer Tracy, of course, is one of the greatest actors in the world. Of course. And Burt Lancaster, and I mean, I love, you know, there's not... You know, I, I like a lot of actors. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all, they're all pretty special. Well, we see you finished up work on three films of A Chance of Rain, Drones, and a Magic Hour. What can you tell us about those and your roles in each of those films? Um, well, let's see. Drones is a very interesting film. Uh, it's about people who fly drones, obviously. <laughs> um, and it's kind of a moral dilemma that we have these days. You know, how do you kill people when you're you know, 10,000 miles away. Right. And I play a general um, whose daughter is one of the uh, pilots of these drones. Of course, they sit in an RV in the middle of the desert somewhere, you know, flying <laughs> drones. <laughs> and it's quite a, you know, it's a, a crisis when, you know, when they have to decide to, you know, launch a missile on mm -hmm. a family gathering, possibly. Um, yeah. Uh, Chance of Rain, I play kind of a, a uh, professor, Juan B. Vaughn, uh, philosopher, mentor to a young man who's, who's had a crisis in his life, a um, crisis of faith, what he's going to do with his life uh, after he's worked in Africa for, you know, helping people and coming back to the States. And mm -hmm. he doesn't quite know what to do, and I kind of mentor him along um, uh, through his uh, crisis uh, in the movie. And, uh, what was the other one? Magic Hour? Oh, Magic Hour. Magic Hour is by the guys who did, um, by a guy named Cole Mueller, mm -hmm. who I've done two films with. Uh, I think very talented. Um, Magic Hour is kind of a, a crime story about a family that, you know, that makes their money, uh, doing petty crime, living in, uh, beach town, like Rotondo Beach, California. I'm kind of the patriarch of the of the family. Oh. Um, and it's, it's about these kids kind of dealing again with their, their life and the consequences that they choose. So they're all, they're all kind of interesting. And, you know, they're all kind of different and independent. And, you know, hopefully we'll see. And, you know, these days the business is so different. Yeah. So it's really a pleasure to work with a 
lot of young actors, a lot of young directors and producers. Mm -hmm. It's always really a gas. You showing them the ropes? <laughs> I don't know if I'm showing them the ropes, but <laughs> <laughs> I just show them, you know, you got to have more food over here for these actors. <laughs> Do some catering. Eat more craft service. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what we can do for you. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if you're up for it, we're going to ask you some uh, questions from the questionnaire created by Bernard DeVoe, which is always used by James Lipton at the end of Inside the Actor's Studio. What do you say? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds thrilled. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you've seen Inside the <laughs> Actor's Studio. Answer. Well, I just give you the answer. You want? <laughs> you want to? Well, no, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you the answer. Oh, come on. Questions for us. That's how most people do it. Right. Well, except on Jeopardy, but that's a whole different thing. So. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, well, if you've seen Inside the Actor's Studio, you know how this works. It's kind of like a uh, basic questionnaire. Um, what is your favorite word? Yes. What is your least favorite word? What sound or noise do you love? Yahoo! <laughs> See, it was worth it just for that. I love that, too, yeah. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Groaning. Uh, what's your favorite curse word? This should be interesting. Fuck. <laughs> Classic. A classic one, yes. Yeah. Other than your own... <laughs> Very much so. Other than what? Other than your own profession, what job would you most like to attempt? Daredevil. Oh, wow. What job would you least like to attempt? Retail sales. <laughs> I feel you on Any that one. Any kind of sales. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, finally, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say at the pearly gates? You got the part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's great. <laughs> Uh, last, lastly, uh, and I, I, um, I just wanted to add on a little thing here. Um, I was, of course, bragging to all my friends that I would be interviewing you today. And, um, uh, a friend of mine, her name is Jamie. She, uh, her dad recently passed on and she actually says that Alan on Boy Meets World used to remind her, still reminds her of her dad and she loves watching the episodes and everything. And I was, I thought it'd be like just a, a very cool gesture if like you can give her a little shout out, a little little message if that was cool. Of course. Hey Jamie, thank you for the privilege of uh, standing in for your dad there. I, I really consider it an honor. That's great, man. Thanks a lot. Well, William, as huge fans of yours, it was an absolute honor to have you on with us today. We'll definitely be looking out for your new films, A Chance of Rain, Drones, and Magic Hour. Uh, we just can't thank you enough, man, for taking the time out of your busy schedule, and we'd love to stay in touch and have you on again soon. It was great. Sure, thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Rock on, all right? All right, thank definitely. you. Rock Keep on, going too. strong. <laughs> all right, buddy. All right, have a good one. <laughs> you too. Take care. All right, thanks again to William Russ for being on the show. Man, I am so glad I guest hosted this week because this was just a huge, huge thing for me to interview him. I grew up watching the show. You know, he's practically like a second dad to me. I learned so much. You know, we, we, we have to watch Girl Meets World because you know if the show's a success, they're going to bring Alan back. And, I mean, it's just not going to be the same show without him. It's like not bringing Fonzie back for Happy Days or something. My favorite TV dad of all time, William Russ, as Alan Matthews in Boy Meets World. I wish he was my dad. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> he was in Aspen Extreme, got paid money to do something he loves, which is ski, got to work with Peter Berg and Paul Gross. I mean, how lucky is that? And it's weird that, you know, as good an actor as he is, he actually, he just didn't even figure it out until he, you know, went into that speech class and volunteered and actually got to study with Meisner. I mean, everybody who's been an actor studied Meisner's method and it's just a huge thing. Now we know why he's just so great and how he's been able to play different characters and every character conveyed differently and just so real. I mean, it was, it's great. I mean, he was filming Boy Meets World and in the middle of it in 1998, he goes out to film American History X. Talk about two different roles there, yeah. Alan Matthews and Dennis Vineyard. And He's very memorable in that scene, too. I mean, he's just, he makes that whole impression on Edward Norton's character. So it's just a testament to how great an actor he really is. We also talk about uh, James Lipton's uh, questionnaire that he does at the end of each Inside the Actor's Studio. I mean, he gave great answers for that. What's his favorite sound or noise? Yahoo! <laughs> 
Well, thank you, Noah, for having me on this week. I mean, this was a blast. I'm glad I got to do it. I got to interview William Russ. Uh, what do you think? Am I going to be like a regular now? or? I think we can make that happen. Clint Schweitzer, uh, the regular co-host with me, is kind of busy with family now. He's got a girlfriend. Uh, she has a little kid. They spend a lot of time together, and we understand that. But uh, EJ did a great job here. Um, give us your comments on how you think he did. I thought he was amazing. Be nice. Uh, <laughs> yes, be nice. Uh, William Russ, we got to interview one of our all-time favorite actors. Just, we're on cloud nine right now. We can't thank all of you enough for listening. We can't thank William Russ enough. We can't tell him how much we appreciate him coming on the Outsiders podcast. That's the kind of interviews you're going to get here and only here on, on the, the Outsiders, Outsiders podcast. podcast.